Welcome. This movie is a discussion on the principles of defense in zones, and uh, we'll look at some examples of some video of some good zonal defending and some bad zonal defending. The first clip we have is uh, of a game for the United States men's national team against Trinidad and Tobago during the Olympic uh, World Cup qualifying, and uh, we quickly see that. TNT here is playing zonally. They're playing a 4-4-2. It looks like across the midfield, the area here, that they're playing a flat zone across the midfield with four. And in the back, there's uh, four defenders as well. Ball's played in here on the bottom portion of the screen. And we're going to see here uh, in the area of the ball, they have a problem to solve here. They have two attackers, okay, two white attackers coming against them. And not sure exactly what goes on, but there's a lack of communication on this vertical run. And that's one of the principles of good zonal defending is vertical runs are tracked. Uh, it's the horizontal runs or runs across the field that are passed on. So we see here a player making a uh, run towards goal. And they look like they're in a good position here. This defender could have just ran with that run and uh, dealt with that uh, penetrating run. But I'm not sure if the communication was poor or what was going on, but that vertical run was not tracked. And it leads to disaster, actually, for the red team. So there's an example of poor zonal defending where uh, a vertical run was not tracked. Here we'll see the United States is playing a similar zonal structure. They've got four midfielders in midfield. They have four backs uh, defending. And here's one forward, and I think the other forward is up off the screen there. So they're in a 4-4-2 as well. And it's a pretty traditional 4-4-2. It's four across in the back and a four across in midfield based on the player characteristics. I think the coach felt that they could play uh, flat in both areas. You see the spaces between defenders are tight. There's not a lot of uh, wide open gaps in their defense. So all these spaces are tight across the field. And also the gaps between the players between the lines, the midfield line and the back line, is also pretty uh, tight. So from the front of the team here, basically to the back of the team. It, it looks like it's a good tight 25 yards. And from uh, across the field, left to right, there also is good tight spaces. Zonal defending is ball-oriented and space-oriented. So what's really important is the spaces between the defenders, not necessarily where the attackers are. But obviously, the attackers have to be uh, taken under consideration. For example, this player here, although far away from the ball, this defender needs to keep an eye out, and it looks like he is checking over his shoulder to see where that defender is, see if he's running forward or not, so that maybe he could be passed on to this uh, defender or tracked back based on if this defender is free or not. So we'll see what happens as the ball is moved. So the ball is way over on the top of the screen now being passed back and forth. And particularly we know that they're playing zones because when we see when the red players move across the field, like in this situation right here, here that red attacker is running across the field, but as he runs across, he is passed on to the next defender. In other words, they're not marking that man around the field. They're letting that player move in the zones and they let the player in that zone uh, be aware of where that player is. So that's a sign that uh, they're playing zonally. Also here we look at this movement in the zones. Here was a midfielder that was marking uh, their opposing midfielder who steps up to mark their wing back 
and then this defender goes with him so those two are defenders are connected and they move and they bump up or slide up whatever word you want to use there and they deal with the attack that way so we see that defenders in the same area of the field are connected and they move together as a unit same thing here we see this defender has moved up to pressure therefore this defender that was back there moves up with him defends the next player in that zone and in this case wins the ball here the attacker realizes this forward realizes that the goalkeeper has clear possession so he's just dropping back to get part of his team so they can deal with a long punt keeping the team compact allows them to get good pressure on the second ball and uh, they win because of the foul again we see the team here in this situation is in a good tight <coughs> zonal configuration from the front of the team to the back of the team is small distances and from left to right so essentially they're making the field uh, in this case about 25 yards long and it looks like it would be about 35 to 40 yards wide that's a difficult uh, group to get through they're defending a punt or a goal kick in this case and one of the advantages of playing <clears throat> in zones is that when we eventually win the ball we are already in the attacking shape that we want to be in we have key players in the key positions so here when the ball is won in this area of the field we see there's an immediate expanding of their shape players get forward get wide they're trying to get forward this player is running forward and wide this player might come out wide to support so they take the tight defending shape and just expand it and make it bigger when they have the ball it's easier to do this in zones because our defending action we dictate what our shape should be and it's just an easy expansion see how quickly the white team is examples of good zone defending off initial throw in here uh, whenever possible even in zones when we have a chance to keep a player under pr uh, pressure we continue to step with that player and not let them out easily so again there's an example of a vertical run going back towards their own goal we continue to track that run and keep the ball under pressure delaying their pressure a little bit but channeling it a little bit there because they weren't close enough but they eventually win the ball and it was because initial good pressure put on the ball here we have another example of it going on right here a run was made back for a ball by a forward that run is tracked by the defender comes with them keeping this player back to goal so now the advantage is still with the defend uh, the defending team and he tracks them with it throughout the uh, duration of the play here another vertical run forward with a for a big ball was tracked keeping good pressure on the ball when it comes down ball is one and they attempt to counterattack out of it again on a throw in vertical run tracked makes them play it back they step and come together as a as a team as this play moves see how the zone the shape moves together across the field as the ball moves the players are moving sliding stepping up again there's that bump up in the back that we talked about here we have a wing midfielder marking opposing teams wing back therefore this wing back steps up into midfield to defend their wing midfielder and then the other three backs just slide across the field keeping gaps tight and zones covered this player could sit in a little bit more here maybe to help uh, cut out some through balls 
or forward balls into forward's feet. But again, they're staying nice and compact with the team. And then once the ball gets down towards our box, here's another characteristic of zonal defending. We man mark in the box so that we are able to uh, cut out all service, intercept crosses. So we track runs into the box and mark tightly once we get into our own box. Here we see the shape of our of our back four. Again, they're nice and tight. Not good pressure cover. If the ball lands in there amongst them someplace, they'll always have cover. Uh, definitely the two red forwards here are making their job a little easier by staying so close together, but usually they'll expand out into spaces or check back for the ball and then the shape of the back four must change. Frequently we refer to the back four as a flat back four if it's zonally. Really this is an indication that we're playing without a sweeper, that we're sharing responsibility across the field. But it's re really never uh, all the time flat. It's a dynamic moving zone. So if we can get this going here, we'll see how they deal with the punt coming in, I think. So we see they, even in these uh, timely areas, they're moving together. It's dynamic. So here we go. We have one defender stepping to pressure the uh, air ball, and the other three backs tuck in, stay tight behind him in good pressure cover positions. So although we call it a flat back four, we see here when a vertical run is made, the shape of the back four is not flat anymore. It's there in a pressure cover shape more instead of a flat back four shape. Here they go. They've dealt with it. They've kept tight. It's a little helter-skelter going on right now, but now when they win the ball, you see the team opening up again. They're expanding forward and opening up. Here's their back four again. You see how this player had stepped, but now they broke pressure. Now he recovers back and becomes part of his back line. But again, look at the the shape of the of the four. It's across the field. They're tight together in their zones. They keep their gaps tight and together. And that way they're able to intercept any balls that are played forward. And again, we win the ball. We expand out. You see these players opening up here. They're opening up. They're getting wide. They're looking to unbalance the defending team, which is a little bit easier to do in zones because we're already in our good spots. And then we keep the ball. The purpose of good defending is always to win the ball, not necessarily to destroy. Sometimes we destroy, but mostly it's about winning the ball, regaining possession. Here are some examples of zonal defending principles in a 4-3-3 system of play. The principles stay the same, perhaps, maybe, but the shape of the team is, is different. Okay, so if we could stop it here a little bit. Here's the back four in this case across the field. Again, uh, the gaps between teammates is what's essential. The center midfield is a midfield diamond shape, excuse me, a triangle shape. They keep that shape uh, and they just adjust it and change it a little bit as the ball moves. And here in this case, here's the two wingers coming back to defend. There's another one probably just a little bit off the screen over there. 4-3-3 three, three is uh, a very flexible system in that Sometimes the forwards have to track back and mark vital players in those dangerous situations. Since the red team here has a has a midfielder getting forward in midfield, this forward feels like he has to track back there because this back is occupied. So let's watch this go here a little bit. You see the triangle staying together. Now it's moved. This looks like they're too high in one sitting. And you see that this guy's communicating well, pointing out where uh, dangerous players are coming in. 
But this holding midfield role here in this 4-3-3, his job is sort of sit in front of this uh, central area. If there's forwards coming in there and deny penetrating passes into that space. You see him looking over his shoulder to where this runner has is coming so that he can deal with him. Okay, we take a look here. The goalkeeper has a punt or a goal kick. We see the good four in the back. Here's our midfield triangle. Here's some wingers coming back, and here's the the point guy up off the screen just a little bit, ready to deal with this long clearance. Good pressure cover again in the back. It's not flat. Keep our shape. If we're tight, we'll be able to dig out second balls even better, which we do in this case. Hopefully we'll be able to keep possession here. Perhaps this player could have spun out, played the ball back to his keeper. But since our shape is good here, we're able to even dig out errant passes because we always have uh, players in the, in, the in the valuable spaces around the field. Here we go again. There's a forward in midfield pressuring. One of the backs has stepped here, leaving three to slide and cover across the field. Here's a holding midfielder and the two attacking midfielders in this case a little bit higher. So again, good pressure making them play the ball back. Vertical runs are tracked. It'll helter skelter, but good recovery, good pressure to recover. Again, forcing the team to play back, keeping the team compact. Uh, this player is a, getting a little bit unbalanced here, but because of the red team's ability to put a player wide. But for sure, the 4 3 3 is definitely secure centrally. And they do a good job. Getting numbers even when players are beat, they have good covering positions. So there's a look at some 4-3-3 three, three zonally. And again, as a way of a summary, uh, zonal principles of the ball-oriented ball defense. The gaps between our defenders is what's essential. We have to keep that space tight and compact and we just move that shape around the field based on where the ball is.